Hey guys and welcome to this edition of Project TJ. Now a couple of months ago I installed an Alpine Halo 9 unit and you may have seen it operating when we're driving around on the dash. It's probably been the best thing that we've added for driver enjoyment. It really has dragged our 2006 model TJ up into 2019. Uh, it's very good, I'm very impressed with it. However, we've installed it with a single DIN fascia unit which worked fine with the old single DIN Alpine that we previously had in it. The issue that we've got though is that this is a bit heavier and I've been fighting with a few squeaks and the like every now and then um, as such and it's mainly because of the weight of the screen and how it hangs off the single DIN unit. Now the fascia that I've bought has plastic arms on it and that's the issue because they don't bolt to anything and reading through the Alpine install manual it does state and it doesn't state really well that using a double DIN mounting system is a good thing and as such I didn't want to buy a complete double DIN fascia and mounting system so I've got some make a bracket from the local hardware shop um, this is pretty good you can bend it up with a pair of pliers or the like uh, to get your angles what we're going to do is take this out install these uh, instead of the plastic brackets that are on the, the single DIN fascia um, and then just reinstall the single DIN fascia over the top I'm presuming that we have enough room behind the center dash binnacle just to click it all back on it does appear that we have I didn't do an install on this because it was basically buying removing the old unit buying a patch cable and connecting it all up and I was a bit hesitant with how it would work anyway with regard to these brackets but we'll go through that as we do install it and install it so let's take all of this out yet again I've done it a few times and for those that have asked this is a Mopar trail guide um, they, got, they were around in 2005 2006 and when we bought this Jeep it just came the Jeep had a promo on them um, it's a removable GPS system you can't update the maps anymore but it works really well for a few different options um, and it looks kind of cool up there so we just sort of leave it there although this has taken over everything but we'll go through what this does when we reinstall it now now with this Alpine unit to take the fascia off there is a plastic plate behind it with one tiny screw in it and it's a really really important screw so don't lose it or the plastic plate or the fascia won't work um, the plastic plate that goes down in it hits a couple of buttons and allows the fascia to operate without that no go and it also helps to have a magnetic screwdriver <laughs> plate that um, you need to make it work. Now to take the screen off the single DIN unit there's two screws on the top and two screws underneath that you have to access. Um, this screen is adjustable for height I've got it as far up as it'll go uh, it's also adjustable for angle um, so in different situations it'll work really well um, it is slightly in front of my vents but I just angle them up and it works really fine. Yes, let's get it off. Okay, so with the screws out, this just pulls off the single DIN unit. Um, there is a ribbon cable here when you're adjusting the, your height you've got to be really careful you don't pinch it. So we'll just put that aside. So we're back down to our unit we'll take off the trail guide. Okay. 
and there's an electrical connection under here that you've got to um, undo. Now this fascia panel now just clicks off. And there are four screws to get the head unit out. Now you can see with this I've put some foam on the head unit to try and stop it rattling around. Turned not a lot of success. Um, and these side arms, which are causing the problem, they just click onto the, the fascia. So in some respects it's just the fascia that holds the radio in. Um, and with the heavier unit it's just not working well. Uh, originally there was a rear support and the rear support's still here and on the new head units there's no rear bracketry at all. So we're stuck with the side ones. So I've made both of these brackets, um, a simple bend at the front and I've just had to elongate a couple of holes. They should fit. Now with the wiring for this loom, I just bought an antenna adapter uh, or a, a loom to go from the Jeep loom to the Alpine head unit. Um, at the moment we're not running a reverse camera. With this we can also run uh, an additional box that will allow us up to three reversing cameras or a forward mounted camera, a reverse camera and maybe a camera on the back of a trailer. You can also buy a box where we can control up to eight accessory units. So we can, we can run the winch through, the fascia panel, uh, driving lights, basically anything that we need to switch for we can run through here after we buy the box. Um, at the moment this unit isn't available in Australia, this box for the switches. It is available in the US uh, and I'm just going to buy one. It should work. But yeah, gets away from all the additional switch controls that you have to have in the cabin. Uh, I'm trying to get a clean look here, not a, not a fighter pilot dash that some people like. So I've bolted the new brackets in with the, the head unit base, um, the fascia panel for the single DIN over the top of that, um, the two brackets that came with that face are no longer there and it's as solid as a rock which is what we're after. And this should just push on now. which it does. So it's time to bolt the screen on. Um, I've tried to push the unit back slightly with the new mounts. Um, it gets a bit tight in here. So yeah, trying to get this screen back towards the dash as much as possible.
So I've been driving this around for a few days now, very happy with the outcome. It's now solidly mounted and there's no mysterious squeaks coming from it. A quick overview of the unit, Apple CarPlay, because I've got an Apple iPhone, works superbly. The only thing I do notice is that sometimes when you go into something like Spotify, it will be very slow to load and I've worked out that that's the amount of apps that I'm actually running at that time on my iPhone and or the age of my iPhone because my iPhone's a 6S so it's getting on a bit but works superbly when it works. With sending SMS's while you're driving you can just hit Siri. Hey Siri send a text. Who do you want to send it to? Never mind Siri. Okay, I won't send it. So as you can see, it's it's pretty simple to use. Um, and Siri, Siri, directions to Sydney. Getting directions to Sydney. So as you can see, very simple to use and you really don't need to take your eyes off the road. Apart from that, if we go back to the main menu, We've got a digital DAB radio that comes with its own separate antenna that's mounted on the windscreen. For GPS, that's got its own separate mounted antenna and it's ever expandable as we've spoken before and everything is able to be customised on it. So it's a really nice unit, probably not the cheapest unit out there, but for the upgrade it's given to the, uh, the TJ, really happy, can't fault it at all. One other upgrade I've done whilst I've been doing this is that normally uh, you'll find that an aftermarket head unit they'll hang out the USB cable for your phone through the glove box or something. Um, what I've done is I've taken out the cigarette lighter, installed a USB and HDMI connector next to the power output plug um, and now I've done that I'm thinking I might take the power output plug out and put in two USB connectors because I'm always looking for USB chargers and in the back I'll probably fit a fridge fitting. So that's it for today guys. Hope you enjoyed that and tune in next time. We'll see you later. Bye.